Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day 23 of the Leco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me think... What? Let me know what you think about today's farm. Let's solve this together and all the good stuff, right? Uh, and today we have 3068. Find the maximum sum of node values. What does that even mean? We'll find out. Today I am just trying to recover from yesterday's uh, heartbreak, but I uh, also just went to the gym and just did some upper body stuff. Nothing too intense. Um, just just trying to get back into the groove of things. So I'm trying to warm up a little bit. Um, and those of you, I, and a lot of people have been joining my channel lately. So welcome, welcome. Uh, and the reason why, um, I mean, I've been traveling, of course, but the reason why I talk about my training uh, is that, you know, uh, we all struggle with some stuff in life, right? Uh, you may be struggling with lead co, um, maybe not, but you may be. Uh, and I kind of talk about my training journey as well. So that kind of like, hey, look, this is what the things that I find tough. Um, th these are the things that I'm working on, et cetera, right? Because we're all doing some stuff. And, you know, uh, so it's not just like, you know, some random guy making everything look easy. Though I don't know that I make it look easy. Today we have a hard problem, so we'll see about that. But yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, but today I've just been kind of warm up the first... Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, I know I'll be sore tomorrow because it's a lot of muscles I haven't really used um, because of my travel. I don't really bench. I mean, like, you know, I have good grip and stuff. But anyway, let's take a look at today's problem. We have dirty 68. Find the maximum sum of node values. Values. Okay, there's a tree and nodes and minus one edges. Um, you're given the edges. Okay. You're given positive integer k and a zero index that we have non negative integers, nums of length n, where nums of i the value of the no, of number i. You have, so you have num i and then some k. Uh, Alice wants the sum of values of trinos to be maximum, for which Alice can perform the following operations any number of times, including zero, on the tree. Choose any edge you reconnecting them and update their value as um, xor k or num sub v. XRK. Okay. Okay, so B, what is K again? Oh, K is the thing you do it. So then now you are. Okay. So basically, you want the sum of the value of tree nodes to be the maximum. Okay, so you have all these tree nodes. You want the sum of them to be maximum. And you want to perform the following operation any number of times on the tree, right? Uh, okay. Is it up to a, oh no, no, uh, any number of times, K is, K is the number that, K is usually not used that way, so I think it's a, I, I feel a little bit awkward. Usually like maybe it's an M or something, but whatever, that's just randomly code things. Okay, so basically you have these edges, what, what do the edges do then? Choose any edge, and oh, so okay, so for any edge you update both the nodes, okay, I missed that part a little bit. Um, okay, I, I was like, in, because without these I thought you could do notes at a time, and if you do notes at a time, then you just kind of do, you know, the max of either the node or the opposite value, with, or the, the XOR value, and then you're done. But it has nothing to do with a tree, nothing to do with an edge. Though sometimes maybe that's just like a confusing thing, or a thing to confuse you, but that would be fine. Okay, but now you're given an edge. I, I, I don't know that I remember this problem, per se, but I do remember similar problems in general. Not on lead code, but uh, this idea of like, doing moves on an edge on a tree right um so so let me see if i can explain the best i can um okay so the idea here is that i mean i i have the idea we still have to solve the problem i i'm i i i know an approach an attack to the problem but honestly at this point i it's not precise yet like as in you know um but but yeah, but the first idea that I want to bring up is this idea that if you can do operations on a tree and then maximize them afterwards, right? And here I'm going to draw a random tree. Um, it's rooted, but whatever, right? Uh, and actually, it's not a binary. I don't think it's a binary tree. So I, 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 keep, I have a tendency to draw binary trees, but you know, yeah. And then the idea here is, or the, the operation here is that you could change two of them, right? Well, the thing about XOR is that if you do it twice, it cancels each other out. It's almost like, I don't know, is there, I don't know, it just cancels each other out. So like, it's almost like if you could plus five and then you subtract five and then you get back to the original number. 
uh, XO is kind of like that kind of except for it's the same operation right but what does that mean that means that let's say you choose this edge and then let's just say you chose this edge then what does that mean that means that now in the new update and a new color you this edge or sorry this node is selected if you will or XOR and this node is XOR this node got doubled things and cancelled out and from this visualization honestly is enough for me to picture this as uh, visualizing this as um, uh, visualizing this as kind of a walk if you will I don't know if it, it, it's, it's how, how I think about it but but yeah but the idea here is that you could start with any pair right any two notes adjacent to each other but then now on one of the notes maybe one of them you already have the one that you want you could walk right and what do I mean by walk let's say you want to walk here right so then now here if you if you add the red node here, now the new blue thing is going to be here, right? So in a way, you kind of walk this node from this from this node to this node, right? And that's what I mean by walk. And once you kind of have this idea of walking around uh, your two nodes, that means that here on the entire tree, you could pick two nodes at to do to do the XOR operation. Any two nodes doesn't have to be adjacent to each other, right? So we start off with. Okay, you have to do it only do this operation of, on um, on uh, on an edge, and then now you you can convert it to two nodes, any XOR. So then now, and then now you can repeat, right? So then it it becomes that means that you could flip either two nodes or I guess zero, two, four, six, eight, dot dot dot, even number of nodes, right? And when I say flip, I meant XOR. I mean you know that's the way that I think about it, right? Okay. And then, so that's the core idea. That's the the way that I, I you know, um, we think about this one, right? And then, and then, yeah. And then, and then it just becomes, um, and then it just becomes a sorting problem, right? You have to be a little bit careful, but I think that is it. Um, yeah, and basically the idea is that you want to flip a even number of them. There are a couple of ways you can do it. I think even off my head, but the, but the way that I want to do it is just by um, and also j just to keep that in mind. Once again, though, edges don't matter. We don't. I'm not even going to look at edges again for this one. But he, here, there are a couple of ways you can think about it. You could sort by the um, the thing with. The way that I like to think about it is kind of a little bit based on an idea from game theory. It's, you don't need to know game theory from before, but I think that's like an idea that I learned from game theory, which is that we take, um, we don't sort by some value, but we sort by how much the value would improve if we XOR it, right? Meaning that, okay, let's say we have, uh, in this case, we have X, you know, this, right? So you have two, three and the input, and you have k is equal to 7, so 2 x or 7 is 5, right? That means that if you do the operation on 2, if you flip it, quote, unquote, uh, it's going to turn from 2 to 5. That means that the delta is 3. So that's how I, I like to kind of sort these, right? So then now, here, maybe you can say for x in nums, uh, uh, I'm, I'm writing it out in a very, like, lazy way, but we can say that x, um, so, yeah, so... This is going to be the cost of, let's just say, or not the cost, but like um, if flipping X, this is the, the benefit, right? And I, I want to say it that way because the signs matter and then and does the order of operation matter. So then now we want um, X, X or K minus X, right? So, okay, right? So then now this gives us the benefit and then we just sort. And then now that's it, right? Uh, or Well, technically, I guess sort puts the um, um, puts the smallest number in the front but we want the largest number so that we can go greedy right so total is going to be equal to uh, a sum of nums because that's where we started with and then we just choose uh, whether we want to flip or not right so for um, and we wanted two at a time so maybe we do like for a b in delta right um, if a plus b is greater than zero and the reason is because that means that if we flip these two pairs, these two numbers, if we flip them 
at, um, and it gives us zero or greater than zero, that means that is a net benefit, right? So then we could do something like that. And, and the contrast, of course, is that um, because you can imagine that um, it doesn't, they don't, they don't both have to be positive. They just have to be sum up to positive, right? Um, and we always take the greedy to biggest at first. And one example for that is that maybe, um, yeah, maybe you have like two, four, XOR 7, right? And and if you flip them, it becomes 5 and 3. Of course, going from 2 to 5 gives you plus 3, but going four from three, uh, going from 4 to 3 gives you negative 1. But it's still better to do to do this flip, right? With, with these two numbers, and you have to do them two numbers at a time because 3 minus 1 is 2. And that's basically what this idea does. And at the end, that should be good. Hopefully, otherwise, I just said a lot and, uh, oh, whoops. Uh, oh, in how do I write uh, pairwise? Whoops. Okay. I think it's pairwise. Uh, yeah. Looks okay, unless my pairwise is incorrect. And let's give it a submit. <gasps> hmm. Okay. So I am clearly mistaken. Um, right. I, huh. It is. Uh, okay. I don't know. Let, let's analyze this. But let me. Is my pairwise right? Because I, I forget what pairwise does. So maybe I'm just messed up what pairwise does. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just I'm just dumb. Because now it does every two and not two in a row. I was just being lazy. Uh, okay, so how do... Eh, okay. That's just me being lazy. I, I thought pairwise does that. But uh, today I I uh, confused myself. All right. So, you, so we... There is one like that, but I think uh, I forget what it is. But I'll, I'll look it up later, maybe. But yeah, for i in range odd from uh, zero to n with a combination of two, and that should be good. Somehow it passed the examples. I, I would not have. Um, I mean, obviously, if it didn't pass the examples, I wouldn't have submitted it. But maybe I should have spent a little time. I knew that that was the only part that I. Um... So if this is odd, then. Uh... Eh, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> oh, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, huh. Mm, oh, no, no, it's not numbers of, eh, it's delta. It's, uh, Okay. I'm just making all sorts of mistakes today. But yeah, um, I mean, this should be good, right? I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's just that I thought Pairwise did this thing for me. I forget what it is. Hold on, let me look it up real quick. You know, tools, get, pair of, no. Get, uh, I guess it's like a group number or something. I forget what it is. Get every two numbers, or every two values. Um, zip. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought there was this thing, but um, in any case, yeah, you just get every two numbers. Uh, I, I don't know. I was a little bit lazy. Now I feel sad because I got wrong answer for that one. But um, yeah. Um, just for every two numbers, you kind of look at it, and then if the delta holds. Everything I said is true, except for that my implementation is dumb, because I, I was lazy to actually just write out the for loop. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, the the complexity is going to be um, bounded by n log n, because of the sorting, right? Everything else is linear time and linear space, though, other than the sorting. And yeah, um, that's it. That's what I have. Thanks for watching. Stay good. Stay healthy. To go mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye. Go next.